Good afternoon, everyone. Hope you're all doing well. It's Eric from African Art Talks with Eric. And today, I'm so happy to come back your way. It's another Saturday. A chill Saturday in the UK, if I look out in, in the window. Um, it's a bit grey, as usual, in London, in the UK. But, hey, life goes on. The weather is not too cold. The weather is okay. And I hope wherever you are in the world, you're also having a great time. Let me know how um, the weather in your country is whether you are in Africa, the continent of Africa, which has 53 countries, or you are in New Zealand or Australia, down under, as we call it. It's another afternoon, and I'm going to bring you someone fantastic, someone that I've been following for a long while, and um, I can't wait to bring her your way because she's a creative genius as well as I see her. Um, but before then, as she prepares to come back to us so that I go on and introduce her, let us say greetings to everyone who's joined us this afternoon. I've got two people who I can see live. Just say hello in the comment section so that I know who you are. And I will say hello to you. Give you a shout out. The comment box is also open for you to be able to ask questions to my guests. And I'm, I'll be more than happy to read them live on air as we interview here. Now, if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, I'm just going to put the link on there now. Uh, make sure you subscribe to it. So the YouTube channel is African Art with Eric. And if you type that in on YouTube, and I think you're watching from there already, I'm going to appear on there. Do me a favor, subscribe to that channel so that we'll be able to bring you more creative from the continent of Africa. As I told you, we've got 53 countries in the continent of Africa. Let me double check. Is it 53 or 54? I think it is. In the region of the 50s let's see right so countries in africa let's do let's let's google it quickly together type in the comment box if you know what the answer is so let's do it now countries in africa i always say 53 but maybe it's 54. okay so ta 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 wow so it's actually 54, 54 countries in Africa. I've always said 53, but it's 54 countries in Africa. So you can imagine me bringing a creative from every single country from the continent of Africa every Saturday. That is what my mission is, to project our image, to help us tell our own story every single time. This is it. This is what it's all about. So do me a favor if you have um, an artist who is in africa or has got an african origin drop his name in the comment box we'll make sure we contact each other and then i'll bring them on as well i'm all open for um discussions across board so we've got past mark pass says hello i'm mattison mattison how you doing i hope you are doing so well thanks for introducing yourself and thank you for joining us this afternoon mattison and then we've got amos Amos Animadu says, hello, when is she getting back into fashion design? Good question, Amos. This question will be asked. Definitely, I'll be asking her as soon as she comes on board. And then we've got Amakai. Oh, sir, how are you doing? My own good friend, Amakai Amatefio, 54. 54 countries in Africa, exactly. I should have known, isn't it? <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. I'm privileged to have you. And we'll be having a chat in the back door because I can't wait to have you on this show as well. Um, that's another creative genius from Ghana. And he says, I'm happy to be here. Happy to see you here as well. I'm so happy to see you here. So, guys, I'm going to make sure that we have um, Beatrice on very soon. I've dropped the name already, as you saw on the flyer. And um, Makai says that he is doing well. I'm so happy to... Uh, see you and it was nice meeting you in person in november when i came to ghana we met at um it's that say o2's show so um i'm so happy that we met in person so definitely i'll contact you after the show and we'll make arrangements to see your beautiful pieces that you do right so anybody else who's joined us do me a favor and share the link to your your facebook page to your youtube comment a community space so that you invite more people to come and join us. Because the guest that we've got today is a brilliant, brilliant soul. And I'd like all of us to listen to her story. You know, on this show, it's a very informal interview where we talk to people and get to know them as a person. 
and then secondly as a creative soul so our guest will be joining us very soon and we will be talking about her in the meantime do the invite i've also got Tariq Dabi, who's joined us, Kao Kao. I'm not sure what the meaning is, but maybe it means something. Let, let me know what, what country you're actually tuning in from, Tariq, and we will say hello to you. In Ghana, we say Akwaba. Akwaba means hello. Right. So, Amaka and Ametafio says, yes, was happy to meet you too. Congratulations on the good work. It's a great platform for artists in Africa. Thank you so much. Sir Amakain Amatafiu. I call him Sir because of the respect that I have for you. So, guys, without much ado, what I'm going to do is introduce my guest because I can see her beautiful face in the background and we will bring her on. Just bear with me one second and I will do the introductions. Right, let's do it now. So, I'll go through her profile, but I'm not going to give too much away because I want her to tell us from her own perspective. I don't want to just jinx everything. Beatrice B. Arthur is an award-winning fashion designer of Germano-Slavic and Ghanaian descent. So let's take that again. Germano-Slavic and Ghanaian descent. She was born in and grew up in Odessa in Ukraine, but after high school decided to move to Ghana. In 2001, B. Arthur shocked the international fashion milieu by winning the Cora All Africa Fashion Award in Sun City, South Africa. And this went on to seal her fate and she dedicated herself to fashion. Now, between 2001 and 2015, B participated in over 10 international fashion events and shows, both on the continent of Africa and in Europe. And then she went on to do TV shows in Ghana, France, Europe, UK, tell me, and many more, Denmark as well. But I'm going to let her talk about the details of such shows. So aside fashion, as I said, she was on TV shows in Ghana. And as a fashion designer and a sociologist, she collaborated with UN agencies, which we'll be delving deep into. She also, in 2009, co-hosted the Miss Echoas Peace Pageant show, which was all, um, organized in Port Harcourt River State in Nigeria. And she also added her voice and presence in the anti-poverty campaign organized in Ghana by Creative Storm in 2005. Currently, she juggles between interior decoration, fashion consultancy, um, art expo curation, translation for the BBC radio or press attache for the renowned contemporary sculptor, whom we'll be delving into later on. Right. So without much ado, and I've summarized her bio very briefly because there's so much more to it, I'll bring her on show so that we will have our chat right now. Good afternoon, B. How you doing? Hi, Eric. Hi, everyone. Thank you to <laughs> all my friends who've tuned in. I apologize for my croakiness. I'm a victim of the of the weather. Uh, I'll do my best. <laughs> <laughs> you know I've got my coffee right by my side, so if yeah, I can you want see. To, um, a glass, a glass of water or coffee or something. As I told you, I was, I was, I was, I was, sip, I was sipping some uh, uh, hot milk with honey. Oh, you know, you? just like a minute before, yeah, I tuned in so that at That's least right. you know my, my voice would be a bit more audible. Uh, thank you so much for even making the time, even whilst you are not feeling hundred percent. We really appreciate that. Oh, thank you so much for inviting me. I feel honored. Thank you very much. <laughs> Lovely. So we, we're going to delve straight in. Uh, for those that don't know you, I read a piece of your bio, but I just extracted a few pieces of information, leaving the rest for you to tell us all about yourself. So let's take it from the very beginning. We would like to just sure. get to know you more uh, from the very onset from primary school to secondary oh. school. And then we go okay. to university. I mean... How did it all start? Where did you grow up in? Uh, where were you born? So I was born in, um, I was born in Ukraine. Uh, oh, nice. My father was uh, one of those early Ghanaians who got a scholarship after independence to study medicine in, right. in the port city of Ukraine. And um, so he met my mother. 
and right. then uh, I haven't. <laughs> so I was born while my father was still studying in uh, in the ex Soviet Union, That's right. and then um, he had to return to Ghana, and my mother and I stayed for a little longer in the in the Soviet Union at the time while she was preparing all the necessary documentation so we could join my father and also because he needed to go back home and prepare the nest you know bringing a foreign wife you know who's oh, right. not okay. here you, yeah. you know to Ghana. Yeah, yes he was a student when he left he came back a doctor but you know the situation usually doctors live in flats you know, you're bringing a foreign wife, you need to go and prepare the nest a little bit so she wouldn't feel, uh, there's already the culture shock that one has to deal with, I guess. Yes, yeah, so then at least make the place as cozy as possible. So yeah, so then at some point, uh, without delving into too many details, my life was such that between the ages of, let's say, two and 12, mm -hmm. I was sort of like going back and forth, uh, you know, to Ghana, back to, to Ukraine, you know, for various reasons, you know, sometimes it was a political instability actually in Ghana was also one of the reasons why I ended up eventually finishing high school in Odessa. Now, the good thing about finishing high school in Odessa is that you get exposed to a lot of art. Okay. It's part of the curriculum. Okay. Yes, mm. I guess like in most Western countries, uh, and, and specifically, it was an agenda. It was a Soviet agenda to, to you know, some sort of acculturation. Like, mm -hmm. you know, you people people had to know, you know, and when I say culture, I mean everything. I mean literature, poetry, theater, you know, sculpture. You know, we're not so big on fashion. It was not wow. a communist thing to be very fashionable. <laughs> you know, yeah. <laughs> you get your hat on, that's it. You know, to yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. like, you know, everybody, yes, there was conformity, you know, everybody, right. you went to the shop and there were the same clothes that sometimes could hang there for years. They had a five year plan. You know, for those for those who are listening, if anybody has you know ever been to the Soviet, you know, or read about about you know their their politics or mm. uh, economy, you know that they had five year plans. So everything was decided like for the next five years. These are the clothes we're producing. You know, these are the carpets we're making. This is the furniture. There's no such oh. thing like in Europe where you that. have for every season. You know, every two weeks. The, the, the brands are coming up with the new styles, you know, like if you go right. to the shops now, they're, oh, I beg your pardon, they're, 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 um, the lines now, I mean, they're the outfits now specifically for Valentine's, which right. is completely crazy, you know, and then after Valentine's, nobody would want to wear hearts. So then they would probably remove those clothes and put something else for, yeah. I don't know, for Easter, but there was none of that. But nevertheless, we had a lot of exposure to, all round culture, you know, including mm. in my case, uh, going to the opera with my grandmother. So I think having that in addition to a very good educational system, you know, uh, I need not tell everybody that, you know, Russians did launch the Sputnik before, mm. <laughs> you know, the red space before anybody okay. else. Yeah. One of the best mathematicians, chemists. So um, I dare to say that the education was was very good and all mm. round, so it was great. And um, I finished school and then uh, I wanted to go back home. First of all, um, I missed my parents. Okay. And secondly, the something that is inevitable one has to mention, there was, there was quite a bit of racism that one had to deal with, with, you know, once, once I had the opportunity to go back home, I didn't see why I needed to stay on and endure, you know, more than I had endured during my, yeah, um, you yeah, know, yeah. primary school days, you know, I'd had, I got everything. Honestly, I think I'm very grateful. And mm. I want to make this a point that I am extremely grateful to, you know, the, 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 the Ukrainians or the Soviet right. regime for everything they gave me free mm. of charge. They gave me a superb wow. education. They exposed me to culture. I yeah. was in a very good boarding school. You know, I was well fed. I was given clothes, everything. That's beside what my family provided for me. So I wouldn't want to make it sound like, you know, I have bitter memories of growing mm -hmm. up in Ukraine. No, I'm very grateful. But uh, sadly, the 
the racist aspect of living there was a little bit burdensome. So yeah, I had, I had a lot of support from uh, the Ghanaian community. Because mm -hmm. mind you, I was living in a home. I was not in a hostel. Uh -huh. I was living with my family, with my grandmother, yeah. But I was in touch. The Ghanaian community was, uh, they reached out to me and my younger sister oh, came wow. to join me also there, yes. And so, yeah, it was, it was good. I think for my mental health, it was very good. You know, and also sort of like, it made me more aware of the fact that I am, I belong to two different cultures. Cultures, so yes. So I think... Yes, I think if I had, was born and bred entirely in Ukraine, uh, I wouldn't be the Beata I am today. Sorry. I think the fact that, yes, no matter what, whilst I was eating Russian food, going to theater and ballet, I was still visiting um, Ghanaian, you know, brothers mm -hmm. and sisters who yeah. would make me listen to high life and uh, do something that would, was kind of sort of reminiscent of Banku, you oh, know, yeah. something they would do with semolina <laughs> or add some extra starch to the potatoes so that, oh, you know, okay. it kind it's of very chale, like wet chale and all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, yeah, so that was very good, I think. It kept me sort of linked and attached to the two sides of, you know, my descent, my nature. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so uh, when I came back to Ghana, um, after studying in the Soviet Union, mm -hmm. it was a little bit difficult um, for me also. I mean, like, I think most diasporans probably face the same, uh, I don't want to call it a problem, it's but a it's like a bit of an issue. It's a challenge, yes. Okay. When you come back, how to reinsert yourself, how to mm -hmm. integrate yourself into the system. And yeah, yeah so, you know, I, I, um, I did a few courses. Uh, there were a little bit of hurdles here and there. I managed to enter the University of Ghana, even though initially they did not uh, really think that uh, my uh, Soviet uh, certificate was equivalent to E-level, uh, uh -huh. to which I told them, I told them the same thing I mentioned earlier. Uh, don't mm -hmm. forget, these people launched the Sputnik. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. You're not that, you know. <laughs> <laughs> these people went to space, so please, don't, so please don't tell me that their certificate is worse exactly. than an A-level. So yeah, so I managed to... Um, I, you know, I, I did a lot of courses before mm. then, you know, secretarial, computer courses, um, French. I was in Alliance Francaise for like uh, four years or so. Oh, so, yeah, yeah. so I, I, I got enrolled in the um, um, University of Ghana, Bigon, mm -hmm. and I majored in uh, um, sociology, linguistics, and Spanish language and literature. So for me, it's like, you know, it's all set. I saw my futures somebody who would be working with one of these agencies. Okay. Um, I use, I already spoke at the time already, English, Russian, and French, about okay. to um, learn how to speak Spanish. So yeah, as far as I was concerned, that's where I saw my career, my future. Uh, so this whole and, and fashion- And agencies, agencies, you meant the international agencies like the UN? Oh, yes, the yes, UN. absolutely. Yeah, because I thought, you know, I, I, I did my research and I actually realized that out of the five prerequisite languages, uh, I think I spoke three or four, you know, so I didn't oh, speak wow. Arabic and Chinese. Yeah, yeah, I didn't speak Arabic and Chinese, but, you know, already with English, French, Russian and Spanish, you know, I was you, good you were to go. To Yes, yeah. I was set to go, yeah, yeah. So so that's where I saw my my future. And uh, uh, as I told you in our previous conversation, it's amazing how through fashion, via fashion, I still ended up working, you know, with, with a couple of these UN agencies. Exactly. So yeah. I think uh, it was my karma, you know. I, or, I, I think sometimes when you, when you really desire something or really, you know, wish for it and think mm -hmm. about it, um, it manifests, maybe not when yeah, you want it, but yeah. it does. But it comes at the right time, I guess. So yeah, so it was. It was. I mean, grosso modo, this is uh, this is my story. I finished school. I uh, wanted to. I did my national service with tour, tourist board. Okay. Um, I did try to get uh, some internships with the, uh, a couple of the UN agencies, but it didn't work out. It was very mm. complicated. So I decided that uh, I'm going to turn to fashion. Mind you, I'd started in school because as the diasporian who came back and wanted to reconnect with my Ghanaian side, okay. I wanted clothes that had uh, that were kind of Western and fashionable, but okay. had a bit of a Ghanaian touch 
to them. Like I was, I didn't necessarily want to wear uh, the traditional kaba and slit or boo-boos unless it was, you know, a dress code for a specific event. Yeah. Yes. I, I wanted to look modern, fashionable, but I wanted a touch of my culture. So uh, since at the time I couldn't find anybody who did clothes like that, I started um, either embellishing my own existing clothes, so regular clothes that I would buy when I, you know, in Europe or in shops in Ghana, and then I would start adding something quote unquote ethnic to it. And I learned how to paint. That's quite interesting. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I I learned how to paint on 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 cloth on fabric. I taught myself. I bought brushes. I bought uh, you know paints that people use for painting on silk. And I taught myself how to paint. So by, you know, um, adorning and, you know, embellishing my own clothes, I got a lot of attention. Folks Mm. were like, where did you get this outfit? Where did you buy this? Oh, this is so different, you know. And where I come from in Ghana, when you say different, it means it's special. It's It's original, you know. It's different. Yeah, you know, different means different things in different countries. (laughs) It could mean you're weird or you're odd. But uh, but in Ghana, when someone says, oh, this is very different, it means it's very, it's extraordinary. You know, it's It's not something that we see. It's a positive connotation to it, isn't it, rather than... Sure, sure. In Ghana, Ghana it has a positive connotation. So, yeah, so then uh, when I did try to find a job with UN and other, you know, actually tried other places in, and uh, either I didn't like the job or the conditions of the salary. I said, you know what? Uh, let me just do this fashion thing for some time. Mm. Everybody says my clothes are nice. So let me give it a try and let's see uh, where this takes me. I mean, you know, voila, basically that's it. So I teamed up with um, another, another designer at the time and uh, we collaborated uh, on a specific collection. I was invited to South Africa through a friend's friend. That's another long story. That's another long story, yeah. Yes, you know, like some serendipitous meeting in Paris um, led me to to South, to Sun City. And uh, yes, lo and behold, shock of all shocks, I won the award, you know, which it took a while for it to to sink in. Because Mm -hmm. I mean, as as I just confessed, I have no formal training. You know, yeah, even that, though that's what, to, that's what I'm trying to understand. Yeah. That before then, had you been inspired? Had you had you had any training? Had you seen anyone do it? I mean, how did you just jump from a novice in the industry straight to winning awards? So this is it. That's what that's one thing. I think that people uh, need to understand that there are different category of fashion designers. Okay. Some of us are purely artists. That's it. So. We, we're not necessarily into the dressmaking aspect of it. Exactly. So the fact that I don't, let's say, cut and stitch mm. and make patterns does not mean that I don't have the eye for the aesthetic aspect of an outfit. So I know how to choose fabric. Mm-hmm. You know, I know how to sketch. Yes. I know how I want the outfit to look. So what I do need, like any good manager, is to employ the people who would realize you know, my dream or materialize my idea, my concept. Exactly. I just needed, I, I needed to find the fabric to show the design. And even if I, even assuming I didn't know how to sketch, mm. I'm capable of looking online or in a magazine and explaining to a tailor or a seamstress, this is what I want. This okay. is what you're using. This fabric is going for the sleeve. This is going for the pocket. This is going for the collar. This is what we're using for the lining. So yeah. I'm capable of expressing and explaining my idea. So to be honest, um, I I don't really, ideally, it is good. I'm not saying everybody should do what I did. But, you know, there are a lot of people that are self-taught. Even if you look at sculptors and painters, some of them are geniuses. They didn't necessarily go to any fine art school. They're self-taught people. They just have the knack. You know, they just have the the gift. So I'd like to believe that for me was the fact that – I just I was lucky to have people who could realize whatever ideas that I had. But to be honest, uh, I still thought that the outfits that I saw the other designers present, because I'm very artistically inclined, probably, and my 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 line was it was um, it was sort of like prêt à porter that 
yeah bonnet kind of on couture sort of like it wasn't the kind of couture that is purely art dress where okay. it's made for yes it's spectacular it's made as a piece of art it's yeah. not meant to be worn yeah yeah no it wasn't it was clothing that could be worn and it could be dressed down so right. of course on stage you make it very spectacular with the hair with the accessories with the makeup but if you take all of those elements away what remains yeah. the outfit oh. itself yeah uh quote unquote regular ordinary woman or man could wear it and not feel like you know like that like they're going to the oscars you know you know what i mean so yeah. like yeah so that's i what, think that was your viewers benefit i'm just going to show a few pictures as you talk along so that they sure that sure please do i don't know which pictures you downloaded but uh, let's <laughs> show so that must be at work i mean this is so beautiful the kind of work that you okay. put out there um and then feel free to just talk through what we see on screen okay so i'd like to talk about uh, this particular collection that you're showing right. which uh i dubbed uh eyes only hands off so it that. was it's a hint at the fact that women are free to uh expose their bodies yeah. if they wish to but that, that does not give anybody the right to touch them uh, if they don't get uh, if they don't get explicit permission, but then you are you're you're allowed to oogle as much as you want. You can <laughs> you know you can undress me with your eyes. You can admire me. You can have all the naughty thoughts yeah. you want in your head. But between that and actually stretching your hands to touch me, you know, if I haven't invited you, you know, that's this. I think there's a there's a big gap, you know. Exactly. So a, so so this. Point, yeah. Yes, yes. So, so this is what this collection. So basically, I used uh, um, I used cottons, I used mm. the wax print, and um, I I work with appliques a lot. So wow. I, um, I I cut out eyes. There's a very popular wax print that's yeah. got eyes on it, and so yeah. So I cut out the eyes, and uh, yeah, I use them. You know, some some became earrings. Some were, you know, as you can see. Uh, the appliques on the black dress, exactly. and then yeah, and then yeah, and then because I was represent, I think I was invited to the Waga Waga Fashion Week. Okay. So um, I hadn't actually worked with any wax print in a while at the right. time because I usually worked with cottons and linens that I like to paint and mm -hmm. just put appliques on. But uh, for this collection, I wanted to use kente. So as you can see on the extreme left, there's yeah. uh, some of the yes, the kente, uh, the cotton kente print, yeah. So with those ladies with absolutely gorgeous long legs, Beautiful. and then yeah, so basically yeah, that's it. Wow, so that's that, that is quite <laughs> impressive. I mean, how how do you combine the local? You know, it's very contemporary what you've done here, and I'll put it back on there where you've combined yeah. local Ankara pieces with a very westernized designed um, piece. I mean, what, what influenced that? Uh, as I told you initially, it's it's just a reflection of myself. That's how mm -hmm. I like to dress. I don't think, I don't see anything wrong with somebody wearing Western clothes, right. but um, there's nothing wrong with that. But then mm -hmm. especially now that I am, you know, I've been invited to become a, a member of the, Global to other well, there's a I I I I don't know if I mentioned or probably you did that no. there's a research center for decoloniality in fashion, and no. I was invited to become a member of the Global Fashioning Assembly. Um, I I I was already doing what what the Global Fashioning Assembly is preaching now is something that I was already doing then. So I, I in other words, you don't need to be totally completely African or totally Western. It's okay to combine and to fuse both because let's be honest, some of our clothing, they're not, for, for the modern world, they're not even practical. It's not okay. practical. You can't even walk fast if you're wearing a long slit. You can't even walk fast. A lot of jobs you can't do. You need to wear trousers. You know, you need to walk fast. You need to sit in a certain way, you know, which the, the, the garments and also the fabrics, you know, some of them, they're very uh, ceremonial. 
Some no. of them, you don't, you don't wash kente. It's not something that you wash. You no, you don't. You hang it. You dry it. Worst case scenario, scenario, you dry clean it. Also because of the pigments, yeah. it's also delicate because it's made in strips. And so the little, the four inch strips. If you, if you, you know, if you manhandle it too much, the it the strips right. starts going. Yes, they start separating. You know where they're okay. joined. Yeah, you know, and it's also you can feel pretty hot in it. You know, it's mm. sometimes I wonder. I go to uh, these amazing engagement ceremonies in oh, yeah. in Ghana. I see people, ladies wearing these beautiful outfits, and they are lined. So the, the cloth is thick and it's lined. So right. it's not something you can wear, and and we cherish it. We tend to use it as, so, as something ceremonial. That's why uh, we use the printed version of it. You know, for mm. more casual wear. Uh, you know, and it's it's easy to to maintain. It's easy to wash. It's not so hot. So back to you know, this outfit is is their 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 casual outfits that reflect my Ghanaian heritage without me trying to look like you know back in the day before before anybody came to visit us. And you know, mind you, our culture, our culture, like most cultures is what we call contaminated. True. Everything is a product of contact. Cultures yeah. come together and they influence each other. The influence mm -hmm. is both ways, you know, so... Positively or negatively, yes, that's right. Yes, whether it's positively or negatively, yes. But yeah. then it's for us to try and see uh, what's good for us. You don't just copy everything from somebody else's culture. You copy what you think suits your context, yeah. your what is beneficial to you. Exactly. And uh, in a similar vein, you have to reevaluate your own traditional culture from time to time so that you can get rid of everything that is toxic mm. in your own culture. Mm. Mm. You know, there's certain things that must be done away with, just like it happened in Europe. There's certain practices they had in the medieval times. They don't do them now. You know, they don't burn witches on stakes anymore. Not they? anymore. Not anymore. Thank That's true. you. <laughs> and I think, and I think you've done that very perfectly in the in the fashion design sense. I'm going to show more of your work um, on screen. <laughs> beautifully done, beautifully captured, where you've contemporized um, our way of dressing and to 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 the modern individual. So, can you talk us through these as well, please? Yes. Uh, so let's start with the left. This was. Uh, uh, if 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 my memory doesn't fail me, this was a lovely collaboration with the photographer David Kweku Sechi. We did this somewhere in uh, I think in Teshi in some uh, hotel. They were very kind to allow us to do it. So um, I think well, I'm trying to remember exactly which story I was trying to tell, mm -hmm. but a lot of it alludes to femininity, fecundity. Um, if you take your time and look, you would see that uh, the lady that's that's in the forefront, she has yeah. sort of like a pink, a pink circle in a very strategic spot of that's the dress. Isn't it? Yeah, I can see that, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Wow. So, you, yeah. You've I, really I, communicated that well. <laughs> <laughs> so I think that, yeah, I think a, a lot of, a lot of, uh, some of my works, as I said, um, I I've never really done clothing just just because it's nice and beautiful. Mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. that has always been some message, okay. and a lot of time the message is about uh, women, women's right to uh, to to basically have control over their bodies, including mm -hmm. their procreative body. Uh, sorry, their pr procreative rights. You know, uh, so I think that sometimes consciously and subconsciously, I do certain things and then I sit down and look at it and I'm like, mm, OK, fine. So I think it's always I don't know if it's because I did sociology, if it's because uh, I'm I am slightly feministic. I don't know, mm. you know, or, or maybe because I've also um, I, I let's be honest, not just Ghana, but a lot of the world is very sexist patriarchal yes. and women even even in certain countries that you would say are already um that they are they're progressive you'd still okay. find places where women still get uh, a salary which is not commensurate or um 
less than what their male counterparts, male counterparts yeah. would, would, would be paid. Yes. Yeah. So for various reasons. So I think that this 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 whole thing, my whole fashion always honestly has either been about not in a very aggressive way. Mm. It's, I'm, I'm not I'm not aggressive, you know, but you know, I'd i package it for it to look beautiful and aesthetic yeah. and nice. So it doesn't look like I'm so I'm very militant. True. But there is always something alluding and to the fact that embedded. there is always, yes, there is always, especially especially when it comes to um, fashion shows and photo shoots. Um, mm. In my shop, I sold, you know, mostly called quote unquote normal clothes, you know. Oh, but yeah. when, but, but the beauty of fashion shows and fashion shoots is when you can actually make a collection with a message. Exactly. You 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 can make yes you can make you can make a, a a collection with a message and you can put it out there so yeah so so um the collection on the left the the the, the black outfits which looks right. slightly gothic as you <laughs> it looks a little bit gothic yes there's a bit of rock and roll going on there uh -huh. yeah I think that also caught the attention of Professor Christopher Richards okay. so he's featured actually um, uh, several outfits from this particular uh, collection, which is uh, Hands of Ice Only in his book, mm -hmm. uh, which came out in 2021. That's right. Yes, and uh, on the right-hand side, uh, I was invited in 2012 okay. to Kenya. Yeah, I went to Kenya, so I was in Nairobi. And I took, um, I took a collection which looked very uh, dissonant because there were, <laughs> I think there were 12 outfits and right. six outfits looked like they had nothing to do with the other six. Okay. Which I, which I thought was fun. <laughs> you know, usually people have a thread of the usual practices. You have a thread running through the entire oh, collection. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> but I made a collection which was six of them look more like they were between lingerie and, and wedding gowns. Right. Because there was right. a lot of sheerness. Yes. Yeah. And um and and the and the and the ones on the right look very militant. True. So once again, showing these two aspects of the of the female nature, you know, the softness, you know, the perceived glorified innocence yeah. of women, you know, the, the pedestal that we're put on where we're not supposed right. to go astray, do anything wrong, or categorize yeah. us, you know, ooh, you know, <laughs> immoral, if you God forbid. And then on the other side, you have this very like, yo, you I know, women in short lady. dresses, they look, yeah, they look aggressive. <laughs> I, like, I like that. So, yeah, I like that, seriously. Because it's, it's breaking the mindset and the paradigm of people to think differently. Yes, I mean... Yeah. I, I would say women are just human beings like everybody else. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> I don't see why they have to be. There, there's no such rule of like, like, this is only for women and this is only for men. I don't believe that. There's human beings, okay? Mm. And that's it. You're a good person. You're a bad person. You're a stupid person. You're, you're an intelligent person. Okay. That's all there is. And then we have different reproductive organs. That's it. That's, That's the difference. That's Nobody, nobody's brain is bigger. Nobody, you know, no, no, no. You know, there's some jobs that apparently, from apparently what I read, uh, mm. women have a better capacity for uh, languages. True. You know, yeah. then men have some capacities for. But then uh, growing up, that's another thing. I think mm. my this mindset I have uh, probably is due to the fact that I grew up in a country where, after the Second World War. Right. Women had to do everything. There were no oh, men. Yeah. Men, most of the men had died. Women were wow. driving combined harvest tractors. Women were engineers. Okay. You know, women were scientists. Women, women were taking to to cosmos. You know, that's how true, true. that's how the the Russians and the Ukrainians called space. So yeah. there was no job. No uh, Soviet woman was ever brought up with the idea that. Because you have a different reproductive organ, mm. you can't be a doctor or you can't yeah. do no. You know, you literally see women like you I never saw a damsel. I, I never saw a damsel in distress growing right. up. Right. Well, right. well, women changed their own ties. They fixed their own. Nope. They did everything. You know, there was never this separation. True. We had extracurricular activities. 
Mm -hmm. Like we'd go to a vocational school once in a while from my, yeah. my primary school. Yeah. And we were allowed as, as, as children, as pupils, to choose what we wanted to, to you know, get some extra skills in. Mm. And there was no such thing as girls go and learn how to sew. Boys so, go and learn how to repair an iron. There, yeah. there, was, there was none of that. It was like choose whatever you want to choose. So some girls actually went with the boys to okay. learn how to repair irons. Okay. And some boys went to learn how to do embroidery. Okay. So yeah. that's that is very important. You shouldn't sort of brainwash children from an early age that okay. you're a girl. So, you know, this is an assigned role for you. Yeah. Exactly. This is what you have to do. And you are a boy. So, so coming from a background like that, there is no vocation, job, profession that as a girl, I thought I wouldn't be able to do because, yeah. you know, unless maybe it's a physical job, that one, you can't cheat nature. Obviously. You know, if I don't have exactly, physically, I don't have the muscles, you know, <laughs> but then apart from that, honestly, so I, I think that mindset Okay, mm -hmm. and at this point, I need to give some credit to my Ghanaian father, right. who also never told me that um, I can't do whatever it is I wanted to do. He was a doctor and actually yeah. hoped that I would become one too. Mm -hmm. If you put in the in the mind of a young girl who is five years old that she can become a doctor, then that's it. You've opened the door yeah. in her mind, so she, she doesn't see. Yeah. That's it. Finish. You've 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 programmed her. So she knows she can be a doctor, she can be an engineer, she can, okay. I don't know, she can be a marine scientist, anything, yeah. you name it. Yeah, so I think that is very important for, for parents in our parts of the world, not to be giving just dollies to mm. small girls to mm. play with. Mm. Give them cars to play with too. Oh, yeah. You know, mm. yeah, let, let them let them find their way. Don't, their way. don't push them in that pigeonhole or whatever, in that box. So yeah, so I think I just I was just lucky, yeah. like you know, with my parents where I grew up, and then um, always fighting. I was always fighting for my rights, honestly, as a woman. Everywhere we do, you a woman, sit back. You know that thing really irked me. It irked yeah. me too much. I couldn't stand it. Yeah. So that was my way of probably reacting against this kind of embedded, mm. embedded sexism. True. You know, yes. True. Uh, it was like, okay, if I'm going to be a fashion designer, I'm probably going to comment. That's I don't true. know if I can. I don't know if I can change the world, but I'll try in my small capacity. In your own way. And I think yes, you did it so well. Um, let's let's go back to when you won the awards in South Africa, and then and then we take it from there because um, sure. I have some pictures showing the stage of your life when you had actually within a short period of time started winning awards for the work that you put out there. And yeah. can you tell us about it? Beautiful. <laughs> 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 so it says that Ghana takes the All Fashion Award, for instance, in the middle. You know, I, I don't know even what to say. When I was going, nobody in Ghana even knew. Like, oh. I didn't even tell anybody, honestly, about my, my, my family and obviously my, my colleague, at right. the time, with who 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 um, helped me build the collection, because yeah. when I got the invitation, I was not even in the country, so I had to design everything, and uh, I scanned all the designs, okay. and I sent it down yes via email, and so he started working on them. So when I went down, I finished. I didn't really tell anybody, you know, nobody had heard of Cora before, to be honest, myself until I until I met the producer. I didn't even know. What, what was Cora Awards. And I found out that it was initially more about music because okay. Cora is an instrument. That's so it was yeah. more about, yeah, it was like our African version of uh, the Grammys. Mm. Oh, sorry about that. That's and okay. um, yeah, so uh, I said, okay, you know what? It's a free trip to a luxurious resort in Sun That's City. Right. This is fun. That's it. I've been shortlisted you know, out of uh, seven countries with no experience, nothing. For me, it's just like a paid holiday to go is, yes. and mix and mingle with, yes, with superstars. <laughs> that was my whole attitude. I was right. happy to be there, mm. honestly. So w when when I won, I was so stunned. I didn't right. even know how to handle it. But when I came back, you know, and of course, as usual, this 
um, journalists, from Reuters, from whatever. Oh, yeah. So it was all over the place. So when I came back, you know, it's like, okay, what's going on now? <laughs> overnight, <laughs> you know, overnight, your name is out there. You're in some wow. magazine. You know, wow, it was it was crazy. But I loved it. I loved oh, it so yeah. much that I decided I have to win more. Mm -hmm. I have That's to it. That's the drive. <laughs> That is a drive. <laughs> being, being on stage and in the limelight, it was nice. <laughs> it feels good. It feels good. I mean, I can, I can see you lifting all some of the awards. Um, yeah. The one on the right hand side, for instance, says um, is in honor of you as a style, style, stylish director. The most stylish creative director. So yeah, wow. so this was really cool. So it's like I, I myself. So the the um, uh, who gave me this award again? I'm trying to remember yeah. something uh, I can't really see. Yeah, somebody gave me this award. Uh, I think they picked up a lot of fashion designers right. in Ghana. And I they looked at the, the designers. Um, fashion Icon Awards, wasn't it? Oh, yes. Yes, I can see now. Yes, Fashion right. Icon. Thank you, Fashion Icon Awards. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so they looked at the fashion designers themselves, how they dress, their personal style. Right. And they decided that, I don't know whether it's because of what I wear or because of my funky hairdo, they decided that I was the most stylish. <laughs> so, yeah, so that was fun. That was great. I loved it. It was really nice. I and, I, and, and I cherish sure. all the, the yeah. awards, both yeah. the ones that were big, you know, fancy stages and okay. the local ones. And I, I'm grateful for all of them. Thank you. Once again, I use this opportunity to thank everybody thank who ever honored me in any way, even if mm -hmm. you even posted just my picture on your Facebook timeline. Thank you. If you liked anything, you know, on my page, whatever, I'm very grateful because I think it's important. I, I appreciate mm -hmm. every little, yes, every little appreciation and everybody's input. Yes. So, so yeah. So earned, you earned the title, the golden, is it golden woman? Ghana's golden woman. So, how, how did that so I'll tell, right. I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. So okay. um, some years back, I think there used to be a show in, in in the United States called the Golden, either the Golden Girl, I think it's Golden Girls. Right. The Golden Girls. Mm -hmm. And one of the actresses is, or oh, she's now passed on. Mm. Uh, her name was Beatrice Arthur. Ah, yes, I remember yes. that one. Yes, 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 yes. Exactly, yes. So now Beatrice Arthur was not her real name. It was her stage name. Okay. name. Yes, yes, yes. So what I think that what Rene Mendy, the lady who wrote the, the article from uh, mm. Fabo Pluriel, she was trying to kind of like allude to that, to that show. Yes. Because I share a name with, you know, uh, Beatrice Arthur, the, the American actress. So that's why she called me the Golden Girl. I guess also because uh, we hadn't spoken uh, in many years. I met Renee actually at the Cora Awards. Okay. So I met okay. her. Yes. So she 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 hadn't written anything about me since the Cora Awards. Okay. So that's like in 2001. So she reached out and said, "Hey, you know, what have you been up to? What are you doing now?" That's you it. know, like, how has it been like? How has the journey been so far? Mm -hmm. You know, so, yeah, so it was really, it was lovely. I was very happy to, you know, uh, tell her about, you know, of course, when, when, when you're given interviews like this, you try to uh, focus on only the good aspects the good of, aspect of it, your yeah. career. Yeah. But in real life, you know perfectly well that it's more like, as we say, Russian mountains, you know. Exactly. Life is never smooth. There are hurdles. Yes, yeah. there, there are challenges. Yeah. There are hurdles, which makes every success sweeter. I think exactly. when you have exactly. to, yes, it makes it makes success sweeter when you go through ha challenges. Haven't said that. What What is one challenge that you 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 face that really propelled you to even become bigger and greater? Well, I think that. And I know how weird this would sound, but I think one of the best things that happened to me was when I stopped working with my former colleague, actually, because we collaborated for many years, mm -hmm. something like eight years, oh, you wow. know, we're like a power team or power duo. Yeah. And um, I think that when we uh, separated and decided to do things, no, we sort of like, 
I think artistically we'd grown apart. Everybody had a different vision. Yeah. Uh, and so we decided everybody's going to do their own thing. Uh, initially, I felt like I was a bit lost. I wasn't quite sure. Okay, so, okay, now I've, I've decided to go on my own. What am I going to do? Where are you but gonna, then yeah. all yeah. type of opportunities came knocking, you know, at my door. Mm. Uh, TV shows, you know, I, I worked, I ended up working as a consultant for International Trade Center. I got involved in an ethical fashion initiative. Wow. Um, yes, I, you know, I, I, I did so many interesting things, you know, as I said, TV, MC, and translation. I got okay. a job as a, actually an assistant to an art collector. So we'll I there. was... I'm really interested yeah, in that was, one. We'll get there. Yeah, yeah. Like for, for 10 years, I was attending all the major art fairs in Europe. I was, you know, I was going to the Sotheby's and the Christie's, you know, was there for the mm. auctions. It was it was yeah. a completely different universe. Mm. It was so exciting. I actually got to know much more about African art, uh, you know, during this period. Mm. You know, I got a deeper well, understanding... You got part? to know about African art from outside of Africa, isn't it? I got to know more about African art from going to uh, African art fairs in Europe and talking to everything yeah. from collectors to yeah. uh, anthropologists. Uh, wow. You know, it, it was it was it was incredible because back mm. at home in Ghana, nobody really talks about these things. We see them as fetishes. You know, they're uh, to do with uh, like magic, voodoo, you know, we're totally either Christianized or Islamicized. Yeah. Yeah. So anybody who has shows too much interest in uh, these objects is like, okay, you know, you're into the occult kind of thing. So you hardly meet anybody that is interested or has in-depth knowledge unless you befriend maybe a professor one of them, in the yes. department of uh, yes anthropology at the university or some other university, you know, the outside Ghana, mm -hmm. you don't really come across easily. Uh, and then there are I have I personally knew at the time very few Ghanaian African art uh, collectors. Collection. Now I know a couple. Yes, right. at the time I only uh, met a couple of uh, foreign ones, right. and they really studied it in depth. So they right. told me so much more, mm. and I saw the link between African art um, and modern art, what right. you call European modern art, which uh, was inspired, a lot of artists were inspired by our art, True. you know? And so, True. Um, True. yes, I mean, if if you see behind me, there's yeah. a piece of cloth from uh, from Mali, which is right. referred to as Bogolan. Okay, okay, so now it's the same people who do, uh, or who make rather Bogolan, mm -hmm. Or the or you know the Babana people, they yeah. also made sculpture. It was very interesting to understand their philosophy, their philosophy, you know, the lines and oh. all of this. Like I, I got to understand the local fabrics better, mm. the the symbolism, the patterns, the colors, everything. Okay. Uh, thanks to the fact that I was immersed for ten years in this world of African art outside oh. the country. Wow. So that was something that I was, yeah. And so I think that uh, sometimes, I know it sounds like a terrible cliche, but a lot of misfortunes turn out to be blessings. I think That's the fact that I moved I moved on, I think I I, I do believe that my fashion, uh, my, my, my as, as, as a fashion designer, mm -hmm. I think I told a good story and uh, a lot of people appreciated me and still do, and I'm grateful for that. But I realized that at that point that I could do so much more. Mm. Like I didn't need to restrict myself only to fashion. And also, as an artist, I had the freedom to yeah. jump from one thing and come back. Like nobody imposes anything on me. I can decide today that I want to pick up, you know, you know, metaphorically speaking, the scissors <laughs> again and go back to creating collections. Like there's nobody can prevent me. Yeah. I have that freedom, you know, and simultaneously I can be organizing uh, poetry shows with my friends. That's right. And I can still be doing uh, translations and mm -hmm. still mm -hmm. be, you know, organizing uh, webinars uh, for for global fashion. So I think that I didn't want to 
just be, be author just a fashion designer. So yeah. I actually stopped referring to myself as a fashion designer. Mm -hmm. And if anybody, or when rather, anybody asks me uh, who I am and what I do, I just say I'm an artist. Or I say I'm a creative. Which right. is... Yes. Well, earlier, is a, earlier on, there was a question. There was a question from one of the viewers, and I think you've answered him already. But we'll, we'll just touch on it because I promised him that I'll ask this question on your behalf, uh, on his behalf. Hey, so Amos, thank you for tuning in. Amos <laughs> is my huge fan. Oh, I'm so amazing. grateful. <laughs> <Amazing. laughs> so, Amos, please, yes. when are you getting back into fashion design? You know, I never really quite left. I mean, uh, I I don't know if you if you do follow my uh, my channel on YouTube, you would see that I actually did something recently, mm -hmm. a photo shoot uh, and a reel, which was uh, meant specifically for the Global Fashioning Assembly. Yeah. You know, so um, I'm, I'm, I've I, I, fashion is my first love. You know, so I don't think I would ever, ever cut that that umbilical cord, no. you know. So in one capacity or another, I would, you know, always somehow be, you know, connected to the fashion world. Mind you, I have produced fashion shows with other designers mm -hmm. as, as mm -hmm. you, yes. So I've curated shows. I think where I am now, uh, I can still contribute to the fashion scene without necessarily making my own collection. I can work with other designers so I can sort of give them direction. I can help them with the, with the styling, you know? Uh, so yeah, but then um, I have a project that, you know, I don't want to talk about it yet because you know, <laughs> I don't want to jinx it. So you yeah, don't something, it. I, something. Like that. You I don't want to jinx it. Yet. Yet. So, yeah, right so, yeah, the right time. Right I still time. have all my machines, all yeah. my fabrics, my workshop is intact. Um, I must say, I'm 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 embarrassed to say that finding good workers mm. in my beloved native Ghana can be a challenge. People, you know, that the kind of finishing and the kind of work ethics that I would You've like. It. It, it, it's it's I I have yes in the past month I have uh, interviewed and tried several mm. several seamstresses and tailors and to be honest. Uh, I personally just can't. I can't accept that that work. Yeah, just, that, just, that, yesterday night, just yesterday night, my wife and I were watching a show and that, that topic came up. Why is it that Ghanaian finishing had always leaves something for you to talk about? You know, we are craftsmen. Leaves a lot to be desired. Yeah, exactly. There's always something, a touch, that doesn't take it, it to that next level. But we are very it's, crazy people. I'm not sure why. We... I don't know what happened. I don't think we've always been like that. Mm. I think something happened somewhere along the line. Uh, because, I mean, I I had a few workers, but yeah. a lot of times they either lived in Nigeria or they lived in a Francophone country or they were Francophones themselves. So I think this is our, this is our thing. We're used to sewing with very patterny, busy oh, yeah. prints. Okay? okay, so let's be honest. On a busy, patterny, dizzy kind of fabric, if the stitch is not too straight, nobody's mm -hmm. going to notice, right? So nobody's going to notice. But then if you're working on a plain, yes, if you're working on a plain fabric or with a plain fabric, cotton, linen, mm -hmm. whatever, silk, you would see the stitch immediately if it's if it's not straight or right. if they're, you, you know, especially if they're top stitches. It's a disaster. You know, for somebody who has an eye for, for details, you would see it in, instantly. But because our, our, we buy cloths, we go to 25 funerals in, in a week. <laughs> we don't like to wear the same outfit twice. Right, we go yeah. and buy a cheap cloth. We take it to a seamstress who sews it for us, you know, for peanuts. Mm. Anyhow, mm. we wear it. We think we look nice. You know, we throw it away. We go and buy another one. So there's no, that whole idea of, sewing something that is properly made for it to last, you know. And we also don't like paying. True. We don't like paying for good work. Yeah. You, yes, we don't like paying for good work, you know. And therefore, we, so, we, we settle for less, isn't it? I beg your pardon? In, in that sense, we settle for less. Because we don't we want settle to for less. Reward, we settle for less, yes. We settle for less. So we, the society, it's our fault that our, you know, tailors and seamstresses don't bother 
mm. to improve upon their skills. They don't, they don't and, bother. And, and having said that, I've realized that it's affected all the genres. So when it comes to shoemaking, fashion designing, paintings, you know, we've settled for less so much so that's affecting every area of our life. We're not hitting yes. that epitome of success. We're not pushing for, let's say, the high-end designer things of life. I find it mind-boggling because we are extremely creative. We are amazing. When we leave Ghana yeah. and we go outside, we do admirable things. That's true. Okay? It's awesome. Come on, Virgil. Do I need to oh, yeah. do I need to mention Virgil? You know, but there are other people, you know, there there are I went uh, a couple of days ago, I was in a museum. And I just, I, I, I happened to find this book. I was going through, uh, I think, uh, artists in the, the 1960s, uh, wow. the artists of African descent. Mm -hmm. A lot of the artists had Ghanaian sounding surnames. Names, yes. You know, yes, they were either 100% Ghanaian or mixed, either have UK, have something. Okay. And they've done so many amazing things in the mm -hmm. arts, whether it's painting, sculpture, photography, cinematography. We are very talented people. So mm -hmm. I believe that the issue is the social, social cultural context that we are. Right. It's, it's Ghana. Mm -hmm. It's Ghana that doesn't bring the best out in us. That's when you true. throw us out there, and, you know, the system is such that, you know, somehow we focus, everything becomes more and streamlined. It, it brings out the best. It brings uh, out the best in us, in every, I, I in think, every think, area. Yeah, you've explained it very beautifully. And that's exactly what's going on. Um, there are excellent Ghanaians all across the world. And we, we sure. put out our best. And we get recognized as such. Let, let's go back to yourself as an individual. Let's go back um, to myself. <laughs> the, the story that we were telling was to do with when you got to the stage of winning awards, being in front of magazines and all that, how did it make you feel at that time? At the time? Yeah. Well, uh, let's see. I am flamboyant, but I'm humble. Mm. I know. I mean, I know. I, I don't know if, if it sounds like an oxymoron, but uh, <laughs> I know I'm a kind of like let, let, let your face this, person. With, with this hairstyle, how can you stay humble? <laughs> <laughs> I like the whole funky wild hair. I'll tell you about the hair, by the way. Right. The hair is a distraction. Right. The hair was a distraction. Was it? The hair was to distract people from my skin tone. <laughs> you know. <laughs> the hair was was for people to stop looking at me as either black or obroni yeah. or whatever. So they had something else to talk about when they saw right. me. They okay. saw my hair. Mm -hmm. I was no more this, you know, mixed race woman or whatever yeah. they wanted to call me. Now, yeah. when they saw me, it was the woman with the white hair. Right. So that was what the whole hair thing was about. It was also the freedom to do what I wanted because I was an artist. Yes. Once I didn't get a job with the UN, why did I have to wear a bun? Yeah, like what's the yeah. point? Yeah, why, what, why do I have to do <laughs> yes, classic hairdos? No, if yeah. you're an artist. You are free. You might as well do whatever you want to do okay. with yourself. It was nice. I honestly, I say this. You know, I don't like false humility. 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 Mm. Jeez. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I, I, I was very happy. It felt mm -hmm. good, uh, but I never wanted it to get as you know as us the usual saying goes. I didn't want to get into my head too much. True. For me, it came with a responsibility. The more attention you get, the more praise, the more limelight, in my case, means that the next project I do, whatever it is that I do, has to match at least minimum, has to match the, the last work I did yes, or surpass it. So if you get so much attention, all eyes are on you, you know, that's pressure. But that's the kind of pressure that I like mm -hmm. because then mm -hmm. it's a kind of pressure. I don't, you know, I didn't relax Oh, I'm famous. Oh, I'm on a couple of magazines. So I got an award. So like, you know, I'm the it. No, not at all. For me, it was like, uh, it kept me on my toes. Yes. Uh, I'm, I'm a very grounded person, very mm -hmm. down to earth kind of. Yeah. I have met, uh, uh, I'm not going to be dropping names, but I have met some very, very prominent mm -hmm. people. 
in society, in, yeah. all, in society. And they were so simple. They were so nice. They were so down to earth. Mm. They So I was like, okay, so here's a person who, you know, has achieved so much. They're so influential. They're so rich or this or this. And they're acting normal. They're right. normal. And they give you, when you sit with them, they don't make you feel like, oh, they belong to the upper class upper or they're millionaires right. and they have private jets and yachts and you are just some Beata from Ghana or whatever. No, yeah. no, no. They treat yeah. you like an equal Mm -hmm. They treat you with respect, you understand? Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking, if people like that act normal, I don't have any excuse or reason or justification to put on any airs, you okay. know, and uh, at all. Like, I don't see why. And I like being uh, sort of, like, approachable. I like oh, the totally. idea exactly. of being and, approachable. And, and, of being and that came across when I, met you, when I met you in November in Ghana? It came across uh, straight away. That was the first time we met physically, and you were very approachable yes. straight away. Yeah, yeah, and that was it. Yeah, I, I, I don't see why I shouldn't be. Honestly, I like it. Mm. Uh, thanks to Malta Guinness uh, Street Dance, I became kind of like popular with the younger generation. I like it when they approach me. You know, I feel connected uh, to them. Thanks to you know the Malta let, Guinness. Let's talk about that a bit more. So after yeah. you you put down your scissors as they put it um yes you were approached by malta guinness to host a tv show was it were, were you part of um, a team of judges i was so what happened was that i i was uh, uh, often invited uh to this show on Ghanaian tv called today's uh, woman as you already know when it comes to women's affairs you know, all for it. Yes, yes, yes. Call me anytime to discuss issues, you know, affecting affecting women. So I was uh, like a permanent fixture on that show to the point that some people thought that it was my show. You know, oh, right. to the to to the chagrin of the the actual host of the show. I don't think she particularly liked that because people started associating me you, with the yeah. show. You know, right. yes. But the good thing was that uh, I became sort of a popular face. Mm. People knew my face. Uh, people could look past my wild hair and now you could see that, really, yeah, you know, despite, yes, my very extravagant appearance, uh, I am level-headed and right. I can't make sense when I talk. So, uh, yeah, I think on one of those shows, somehow the producers who were looking for a female judge to join uh, two other male judges. Okay. Uh, they came across my face on TV. And at the time, uh, I had, I think, a big, you know, a big blonde afro. Right. Yeah. So, yeah, so there was this whole, this whole glamorous look, which is necessary for a mm -hmm. show. It is. You know, you need... Yes, you know it's it's showbiz. It's showbiz. So the that's it. that's the name it's showbiz. The whole so yes, the looks count. Believe me. Exactly. So yeah, so they 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 saw me. Uh, you know, I don't know what I was discussing, but apparently they liked it. Right. And in the look, so I got contacted. As like, hey, we would like to uh, invite you or mm -hmm. to become one of the judges for Malta uh, Guinness Street Dance Competition. I'm like. What do I know about street dance? Wow. I'm clueless. I don't know anything. You know, I mean, I know, I know what break dance is, mm -hmm. but I mean, how am I going to be a judge? How am I going to judge? That's someone else's street dance. <laughs> someone else's dance. I was like, oh, don't worry about it. You know, don't worry about it. You just, we'll, we'll, we'll teach you. You know, okay. we'll show you what you, there's some key words you need to drop, you know, exactly. these are this. So you, you don't worry about it. Yeah. I'm like, okay, cool. Go find, you know. This sounds like fun. This sounds like something, a new experience, something I haven't done before. So, yeah, because I was at the time, um, I wasn't uh, actively producing any clothing line. Mm. I was like a free radical, you know, I was available. So I jumped onto this. It was terribly exciting. And then, of course, thankfully, Internet exists. So I started watching a lot of these shows online because I wanted to sound like a pro. I didn't want to right. sit there like a blonde, blonde bimbo, you know, who just gets Not paid. Oh, and how, being pretty. Yeah. No, 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 no. I wanted, when it was my turn to comment, because that's yeah. what you need to do. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. every time a team or a, a, a group of dancers finish, you have to say what it what it is they did well. You know, if it's flips that they do, it spins. You know, there's there's a terminology that terminology you know, yeah. Know. Yes, absolutely. You you have to sound like you know what you're talking about. Exactly. You know, I guess, oh, it was all very nice and very amazing. You guys are, wow. You, no, 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 no. I wanted to be very specific about what I liked and what I didn't yeah. like. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like a crash course in breakdance terminology. <laughs> it was. <laughs> and then, fortunately for me, too, uh, one of the judges, Reggie Rockstone, used wow. to actually do um he, he was a, a break dancer oh, yeah. so i got a lot yes i got him like you know he gave me a crash course as well you know because right. we had to spend a lot of time bonding mm -hmm. you know there was a boot camp so that was one amazing experience it was okay. lovely it involved a bit of traveling to yeah. nigeria okay. and as i said it end it endeared me to the younger generation because now everybody knew my name. I was I Miss B, Miss B, everywhere I went, Miss B. And then the beauty of it too is that it's a family-oriented show. Mm. And so a lot of people used to watch it together. Grown-ups would watch it with their children, you know, right. and they would repeat it. That's so it. it was crazy. Well, the funny thing was that, um, you know how in Ghana there are a lot of uh, checkpoints at night, right? Like the oh, police yeah. will stop you to check you, blah, 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 your driver's license. If you don't have anything that you're not supposed to have in your car. Right. And uh, all of a sudden, the police would stop me and say, hi, Miss B. Look at that. <laughs> the police got to know you. <laughs> you hi, Miss B. Miss B, you can go fast. <laughs> no, 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 no. Miss B, can I bring my son to, oh, wow. <laughs> to audition? Wow. <laughs> like, uh, yeah, okay, I'll talk to the producer. I'm like, come That's on. Right. <laughs> it was too funny. But yeah, it was it was great. It was wonderful. It was I, I really it's liked. Cool. And those were the days when for every season I chose a, a, a style That's of it. attire and a hairstyle that would go with a certain like yeah. So I still had my team. Yeah. So I would sew all my outfits and you know, so it was right. great. That was great. It Fantastic. was wonderful. Okay. Yes, yes. And, and then, I and think through the, that, yes. through that, mm -hmm. uh, in a bizarre way, uh, being on TV all the time, in addition yes. to my uh, my fashion experience and career, I ended up, that's how come I became a consultant for the International Trade Center. Oh, wow. So, you, you know, I ended up going back to fashion back from to TV. Yes. I went back to work as a consultant on mm -hmm. an uh, ethical fashion uh, initiative. So that was also great. That was lovely, interesting. It was great to so work as with. As mentioned uh, before, that that is a, a UN agency, isn't it? And therefore, you ended up. It is a UN agency. UN. I told you I wanted to work in the UN. It didn't happen right. for me initially. Yeah. And uh, what, like almost ten years after, UN came knocking on my door. There we and go. I opened it a jar, a jar, like you're welcome. Enter. Come in. I've been waiting for you. That's right. That's right. I've been expecting and, and that's you all the way, isn't it? We we attract what we we talk about. What Absolutely. We think about. Yes, we attract. Yes, it. that's amazing. Yes, that's yes, really yes. Good. So yes. from then on, I'm interested. I mean, I've seen from your career and your life, art has always played a dominant role in it. Um, from then yeah. on, you've got the chance to meet the big, you know, name in the art world from Ghana, El Anatui. Tell us all about it. How did it happen? Oh, El. Hmm. So. This is this is another interesting aspect of the whole thing. I got to know about L right. from a foreign, from 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 a foreign art collector. Right. So we we met at some art event, and my friend, the art collector, was saying, "By the way, have you seen the works of the amazing Ghanaian artist Ella Natri?" And I'm like, mm. "I said that sounds Japanese. Are you sure he's Ghanaian?" I said, no, no, he's Ghanaian. I'm like, but that's that's weird because uh, I know all the Ghanaian artists. You know, Amakai yeah. will attest to that. That's you know, right. Larry Otu with Wiz, with they're all my friends. Yeah. I know all of them. Mm -hmm. So I was like, how can he be a Ghanaian artist? And I've never heard of him. I've never seen his work, yeah. you know, in any gallery. I've never seen his work in anybody's house. Nobody talks of him. And it was like, well, that's because he's been living in Nigeria for the Nigeria. past 40 okay. years. Yes. 
he's not in Ghana, and mm. he exposes only in like some of the major arts, Working you know, some of the most prestigious art institutions in the world. I'm mm. like, what? There is a human being like that, artist, mm. and me, who, Biata. Who, who I don't know of him. Yeah. Quickly then I go online and I started researching. I was blown away when I saw his work. Mm. And then the, the next thing I started doing is I started calling all my friends who are artists and asking, please, do you know him? Have you met him? Does he come to Ghana? How can I reach him? Who can I? Wow. So I ended up, I ended up with, uh, I ended up in Sade's, the late Sade's house. Okay. And Sade was amazing. He was like one of the first major art collectors in Ghana. Mm -hmm. Like he has almost everybody's early work, yeah. you know. And uh, so I I went to his house and I said, said, uh, I am sure you know Al. He says, of course, he's a personal friend. I oh, said, wow. I would love I would love to meet him. Mm -hmm. he, does he ever come to Ghana? He's like, mm, hardly ever. You know, he's mostly outside. Yeah. So I said, okay, but can I have his number? And he's like, I can't give it to you without his permission. Sure. I said, okay, fine. So please ask him. Uh, the next time you speak with him, if it's okay, so I can have his number. I said, okay, I'll let you know. And then through some very crazy, another, you know, my life is full of these serendipitous, crazy moments. Yeah. Through another friend, I find out that she knows him also very closely. She has his number and she calls him and makes me talk to him on the phone. And I was like, you know, I'm very talkative, as you can exactly. tell. <laughs> How I, can that happen? When, I mean, when I heard good... Dale's voice on the phone, I was like, okay, hello. You know? You couldn't say a word. <laughs> it's like, it's like, is this really me? Am I really talking right. to this? You're so then I managed, it was terribly, it was, it was so moving. Mm -hmm. And I managed just to say to him that I'm such a huge fan. Mm -hmm. I know you hear this very often. Um, I would love to meet you. I promise not to harass you, but it would be such an audience. <laughs> I promise to behave, please. It. it would be such a joy and an honor for me just to meet you in person. Mm. So he said, yeah, sure. The next time I come to Ghana, uh, we'll arrange so we meet. Right. In the meantime, I happened to go for one of these art events that I was, you know, it was in the period when I was working for the art collector. So I had to go to Paris, and in my free time, I went to the Centre Pompidou, and lo and behold, when I entered the Centre Pompidou, here was Earl's work, like it was the first work. So they have their permanent collection, and then they have their temporary exhibitions. So when I just entered, here was Earl's work, and I just broke down in tears. And then, so you can imagine, just imagine the scene. There is this woman, we don't know where she's really from, yeah. you know, some mixed race woman with some wild hair who walks into Santa Pompidou, stands, walk, just walks in, sees an herb, uh, sees a work, and then just stands there and then she's weeping. That's right. You know, and they were like all like looking at me. Then like it was <laughs> you wow. know. Uh, I was weeping. Yeah. I was so it was it was a shock because I didn't awesome. expect it. Yes. Yeah, like, I, I didn't expect to to see his work there. Mm. Um, not that I didn't expect to see his work there as in his as work is not good at that's not yeah. what I meant. I meant that yeah. I wasn't prepared. I didn't know the yeah. work was there. And exactly. for it to be the first work that you see when you enter, it was like, you know, it just, right. it was too much. So I managed somehow to, you know, I pulled myself together, you know, mm. wipe my eyes, whatever. Mm. And I asked someone to take a picture of me, which obviously... I plastered all over social media, you know. Absolutely. Yes, me, <laughs> me standing in front of Ella and she's working in Paris. Go Ghana, right. you know. <laughs> I, yeah, because I, I just wanted everybody in Ghana who did, would never heard of him. I wanted them to know that we had this amazing artist whose works were, you know, in prestigious, yes, Western institutions. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And then I think uh, Ricky. Ricky Wemega picked up that photo and I think he forwarded it to L. Oh wow. So L okay. saw me, yeah, yeah, L saw me standing in front of his work. So yeah, so then uh, I don't think that played any role in mm -hmm. him meeting me or agreeing to meet me. But uh, uh, soon after, when I returned to Ghana, uh, 
somehow, coincidentally, he was passing through a crowd his way out to some other show somewhere out of the country. And this friend, this other friend that uh, whose name I didn't mention, uh, oh, she arranged for yes, she arranged for 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 us to meet, and somehow we developed a relationship over mm -hmm. the years. Mm -hmm. uh, I was lucky to be invited to the Biennale, Venice wow. Biennale 215, where L. That's me standing with L on the stage when he got his wow. Golden Lion for wow. his yes for his uh, lifetime achievement, and uh, yeah, and then after that, I just you know. I said, uh, I proposed myself as a worker. I said, mm -hmm. I will please mm -hmm. employ me. I speak a lot of languages. That's it. You know, I speak uh, Spanish, French, Russian. My Italian is decent. Uh, right. So, yeah, I, 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 can be, I can be useful. Look, not just adore you and follow you to all your True. shows, True. you know, as a loyal fan, but That's I can it. actually, yeah. And, and El was, uh, he was gracious and he gave me a chance to prove myself. So, uh, yeah, I got the job as his uh, press attaché. Voila. Amazing. I told you, I when mean, you think of something, yeah, you know, and you're up. focused and you really want it, somehow, if it's meant to be your thing, the, mm -hmm. the universe, the universe makes it happen. Exactly. And I think one thing that we're all learning from yourself is that you are a go-getter. Once you put your mind to something, you go get it. Yes. That, 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 that's, yeah, that's something we're picking from you. I, Yes, yeah, I'm a, I'm, I'm, a, I'm not, I'm not aggressive, aggressive, mm. but I think I am, um, I'm focused. That's right. I'm focused. Yes, yeah. I'm focused, yeah. and I'm realistic. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm realistic. I know, you know, and then also because, uh, let's be honest, I am, I'm an easygoing, friendly, nice person, so it's easy for me to network with people. True. True. Yes, and so t through my interpersonal skills, yes, yes. through my connections, yes, you know, and, and luck. Nobody right. should ever underrate or underestimate, mm. yes, the, the importance that luck plays in our lives. Because True. just meeting, being somewhere, meeting somebody in the right context at the right time uh, can make such a huge different, difference in one person's life. That's why you will have maybe a lot of very talented, skilled people who uh, maybe deserve even to be somewhere, but then somebody else just got luckier. Mm, mm. Somebody mm. else who, who might be uh, not as skilled. Maybe, as you are. You know, I still get, get, get the opportunity. I still get it in life, generally, yeah. yes. Yeah, yeah. 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 but I, I, I'd like to believe that uh, in my case, it's hard work plus luck. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And talking about hard work, I think your next phase was with Professor Richard Christopher, was it? Christopher Richards, rather, from Brooklyn. Uh, I'd like to show some pieces here whilst you talk about it. Yes. Oh, this, this, this is something that is very, very dear to my heart, this whole project. So uh, the, it started also, this is also something related to uh, when I broke off from my previous partnership and decided mm. to go solo. Right. Uh, I wanted to do uh, different designs. Okay. Uh, formerly, everything I did had a Jinkra symbols on it. You know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amakan, Ghanaian. So I had a, this thing about putting, not necessarily Jinami, but I was putting Akan symbols <laughs> a lot. I worked with a lot of symbols. Okay. When I decided to go solo, I wanted to do something different. You know, mm. uh, so uh, the hibiscus flower, you know, I love hibiscuses very much. So I decided to put, you know, to do a whole line yeah. with hibiscus flowers. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So I made this this dress, which was actually for the Ghana Fashion Weekend 2009. Right. And, uh, yeah, it was it was part of that collection. Beautiful. And uh, Professor Richards was then uh, still, still uh, studying, still doing his research. Uh, you know, he he wasn't a professor yet, right. and he was uh, researching on uh, fashion in in West Africa. Okay. I don't honestly, he particularly, you know, he's like he's focused on Ghana, so I'm not quite sure if he's done any research on Togo, Benin, and uh, other countries. But I'm sure he's very knowledgeable. Probably he has, and he saw my uh, collection. So he mm -hmm. he was. I I don't think it's so much the the hibiscus flowers that intrigued him. It was yeah. the Russian nested dolls, the matryoshkas. Right, 
Okay. That I had, I had, I, yes, I'd used that as embroidery on some of the clothing, and he found it very interesting to see this mixture of uh, African uh, symbolism with Russian symbolism. Mm -hmm. You know, it was something yeah. he hadn't come across before, mm -hmm. so he he found it very interesting, and we sort of like embarked on a relationship, a friendship. That's it. And uh, he went back to the states, and then I met. Uh, uh, through another very good friend who used to work for the UN, UN again, uh, <laughs> who connected me to an amazing photographer who was mm. then based in Seattle. Right. And uh, he, he, I don't know what exactly he saw in my work, something mm -hmm. good, obviously. Oh, yeah. Because, because he, he, he'd worked with, you know, I mean, he'd, he'd done shoots for Marie Claire, right. you know, he'd worked for all of those magazines, you know, mm -hmm photo shoots in the States and he was somehow moved by what I did. There's obviously that little Slavic connection because yeah. he's from Croatia. Right. And so he, he came to Ghana mm -hmm. and uh, we discussed the project online. I told him that I like to do clothes that are nice and fancy, but I also like to tell stories. Right. And so I don't, I want my work to be meaningful. I want something beyond just, Beautiful. Somebody's wearing it oh, they look beautiful. You know, yeah. for me, it has to be meaningful. Right. So I mentioned to him that I would like to do a shoot at the Elmina Castle to pay an homage mm -hmm. to the former female slaves that were there. Mm -hmm. And he was so blown away by that by the idea. Let he me show you the idea from, from that shot, and then we'll talk about it. So yes. is, that, is that part of it? Is it this is part of it? This is part of the yes. This is beautiful. This is, this is the freedom. I, I I dubbed it freedom from slavery. That's right. So yeah. So so we we selected. I he's he's very artistic. He's an amazing mm. photographer with a good eye. I trusted him because it worked for you know glamorous cosmopolitan magazines. So That's together, right. you know, I sent him pictures of the of the background of the walls. Right. Of the walls of, of, of Elmina. In fact, he named the shoot the walls of Elmina. Okay. I named it Freedom from Slavery. From slavery, but because he, he named knew, it. Knew the story. Yes, and he named it the walls of Elmina. So <laughs> yes, so then we chose a couple of outfits together, mm. you know, and we told this story, which was, which was yeah, yes, this is this. also yeah. Let's go on to this, this one. Uh huh. Yeah. This this. This uh, design, uh, I used to call it the uh, Gothica. Right. It was a very intricate applique. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know. Uh, I wish you could see it a little bit more up close. But actually, it was a pattern that I got from a Christmas tree. I was, <laughs> I was wow. flipping through a magazine in an airplane, and there yeah. was this pattern that kind of looked like a Christmas tree. That the, the you know, and I said, oh, this is a nice design. I could probably use, uh, uh, I started with Kente and with Bogolo. I used okay. to cut it out as an applique, yeah. you know, and then and then superimpose it on a plain fabric. Mm -hmm. But then la later I started doing it with just plain fabrics. So yeah. in, in the initial, initially in my workshop, we used to call this pattern the Christmas tree pattern. <laughs> <laughs> Came out really well. And then, and then this one was taken at Cape Coast as well, is it? Elmina, is it? Oh, yes. Uh, that, no, we never did a shoot at, at Cape Coast. This is all Elmina. Okay. And then yeah. uh, we, we we really wanted to take a picture on one of the boats because we thought it would be great. Yeah. And so we just walked down, you know. I was like, okay, these people, if they see my foreign photographer, myself with my wild hair, they're going to ask me for so much money. Yes. You know, to be able to take a picture on 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 one of their boats, mm -hmm. yeah. but then uh, it's it's this is this is really funny. The owner of this particular boat, he was totally enthralled or enamored with the model. He mm. found her so beautiful. He was looking at her. He found her so beautiful, and she yeah. has this she has this attitude about her, you know, she just, I said, it would be nice if we could take a picture of you on that boat. She says, okay, let me just talk to, let wow. me talk to the gentleman. So she just walked up to him and said, listen, do you mind if I get on top of your boat and, 
and take yeah, pictures. Right. Like, would and he was like, sure, sure, no, no problem, just like that, just like that. Like, there was no negotiation. There was no, how much will you give me? How much will you pay me? What do I get from this? Nothing. Wow. He just wanted one picture with her in return. That was That's it. it. That was it. Girl power. Yes. Girl power. <laughs> <laughs> right. And then I've got I've got this last one. Same yes. beautiful lady. Um, the one on the right. I think we've talked about the one on the left already. The one on the right. Yes. Yeah, it's the same. One. I work with uh, she's my favorite model, Philippian. I love her to bits. We're still in touch. I just had a shoot with her recently. It was really nice to reconnect with her. Um, I I really wanted to work with her on this project for many reasons. One, wow. because I just think she's drop drop dead gorgeous. Yeah. You know, she's she's beautiful. Everything you know, her body is curvaceous. Her cheekbones, her bald head, everything, her attitude, her body language. But then also she happens to be a victim of abuse. So for me, there were those parallels between the women to whom I was trying to pay an homage in mm -hmm. the castle and my model, you know. Okay. So she, she felt like, I mean, it felt like she was the right person for this particular project. Beautiful. You know, so Beautiful. yes. And, and. And what is even more beautiful about this amazing project is that no money was exchanged between anybody. You not know, it was the world renowned photographer. Not, not nobody was paid. Wow. We all did this out of pure love and That's respect good. for each other. Uh, Dean was uh, very happy to work with me. Mm. I was more than elated to work with him. I completely loved the model. Uh, another aspect I forgot to mention. I didn't pay a dime for the shoot at the castle. Why? Because briefly, in one of those periods when I was being tossed up and down between Ghana and, and Ukraine, I, I was briefly in the uh, Ola Convent Girls in oh, the school, right. okay. which there's a convent, yes, a Catholic school on the hill. And yeah. uh, and so uh, we used to go on excursions to, to, to the... At least I, I remember going there at least twice to the Elmina mm. Castle. It made me very uncomfortable. I didn't like the place and anything. So in a way, going back there was my own sort of, a, I don't know if it was say catharsis or what it is. Mm. You know, I needed to make peace with, with the place, even though it's a place, it's yeah. a place that represents something terrible. True. So it's not something we should forget, just like we no, shouldn't forget. Not, no. We shouldn't brush it aside. No. no, 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 no. I'm not trying to make Albina Castle look like some glamorous, glamorous place, you know. No, not at all. No, no, no. It's a sad, it's a place with a sad story. But yeah. I needed to go there and, and and be able to walk there and despite all the horrible things that happened there, I needed to make peace with the place. Right. So what happened was when I wanted to do the photo shoot there, I through a friend got the number of the gentleman, Mr. Ahim at the time. Mm -hmm. He was the mm -hmm. director. Right. And in our conversation, it came out that I used to live in Elmina. Briefly, I was in a school wow. up the hill. So That's once good. he knew that, you know, I'm Fanti, I used to be in Elmina, I used to right. come there as, you know, now I'm some kind of big shot Ghanaian designer. He's like, my sister, the place That's is your yours. That's, it. That's your home. Come and, come and do whatever Just you want to come, do. Come with your team and do whatever you want, you know, because right. I explained to him that, I would never do anything to embarrass myself, my country, or the castle because yeah. it's you know it's world heritage. So I wasn't right. com coming to use it for any you know, any, and it wasn't a yes, and it was not a commercial. The whole objective of the thing there was nothing commercial about it. I wasn't going to use the space to make money. Nobody mm -hmm. was getting paid. So everything you know, there was this amazing everything just fell into place there was this sort of like how would you call it i mean it it's was a just collaboration awesome. isn't it collaboration coming beautiful from collaboration everything amazing you know constellation of factors <laughs> everything just fell into place it was just beautiful and 13 years after this picture the the, the one uh with a yellow dress yeah. was chosen by the publishers rutledge they they chose that picture because Professor Richards uh, submitted a lot of pictures to them. He, I'm not the only one featured in that book. That book covers like from the 60s till now, 
all the female Ghanaian designers. Yeah. So I'm just one of the featured designers in that book. So you can imagine my, once again, my utter shock oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, my shock. joy and That's my right. joy when uh, I saw that uh, my my photo, you know, or our, when I say our, this me, Felivian and Dean, and exactly. Dean, that our picture was chosen for the, for the book cover. It was very gratifying, to be honest with you. I felt really, that really amazing. very good, very proud and very happy. And having said that, so, we've yeah. got a comment from, from um, a good fan of yours, Tarek. Um, I think you will be doing hey, a reading Tarek. on this one. Tarek is in Montpellier. He promised me that he will tune in. Merci, uh, Tarek. And, and Tarek says, bravo. I think you, you, you do French better than I do. Please read it. <laughs> yes, he said, bravo à toi pour ton travail. So bravo hey, for the work you do. Head. That's right. Over <laughs> <my head. laughs> what does it mean? It, I just translated. It's like, well done for all the work you do. Ah, uh, well deserved. Bravo well deserved. means well done. That's right. Well deserved. Well done. And we thank, thank you. you so much. Any any last words for up and coming creatives, especially from the continent of Africa? Listen, if you uh, a lot of, as you know, and in, in, in most of our countries, mm. we are we we are we're not industrialized. True. Okay, we're not industrialized countries, but what we have in abundance is talent. Yes. We have a lot yeah. of talent. And we yeah. also a young continent. Mm. We have a lot of youth. So we need to channel their energy into something positive. Otherwise, they'll be doing 419s. And then there's also when you have all these um that with all due respect, when you have all these mus musicians putting out content which is about driving Bugattis, Maseratis, wearing yeah. Rolexes. You know, it's all awesome. It's it's nice, but I think that that message also needs to change a little bit. You know, <laughs> and and with, when you have all our our famous musicians, uh, you know, being like uh, how do you say that they're busy promoting only foreign brands. brands I'm not something. sure. Mm. I'm I'm not sure that's the way to go. I think more of our famous, when I say famous, I mean superstars that are out there, you know, yes. the ones on the international scene. I think they should also promote some of the some of the fashion and the art exactly. that is made on the continent. Yes. Do, you, do you get me? That's what yeah. I, I and so yeah. they should they should change their narrative mm -hmm. so that the, the youth would know that we've got good designers, good painters, good photographers, whatever on the continent. And then also when it's all about us having a positive image about ourselves. Exactly. There's a lot of there's a lot of self-hate, yes. you know. Yes. That's why I am involved now with the um, the global um, fashioning um, assembly right. and where we're talking about decoloniality, which okay. is that we need to change our mindset about mm -hmm. how we perceive ourselves. Yes. So, you know, that's not to say that what I'm wearing now was not made in Europe. It's you know this is made True. in Europe and it's cold, so it's adapted to the adapted to the to climate. The so, Same here. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But 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 I also love things that come from Africa, and I also wear them and I also make them. So That's we it. shouldn't be we shouldn't become militant and live mm. in our live in our own bubble and like we're rejecting everything foreign. But neither should we only look up to everything that is foreign and if it's foreign then it's automatically better we need to harness all the all the uh, we need to harness all the talent we have we need to give people opportunities it's very difficult for a lot of creatives to make a living in in i'm, I'm talking specifically in my country ghana, ghana. you know it's, it's very difficult if Yes. So if you don't give people an opportunity, if you don't support them, if you don't create the arena, and I'm talking mm -hmm. about civil society and the government, what do you expect all these young people to do? That's and, right. you know, where, where, where do you expect them to end? Mm -hmm. You know, and how will the country move forward? We have a lot of artists. And, you know, so that is what we don't have a lot of factories. No. You know, we're not we're not going to be famous in on, on, on planet Earth for our amazing uh, engineers and doctors, but yes, we can be very famous for our artists, and art is soft power and always exactly. has been. Very, yes. very, so if very people very respect powerful. our artists, they respect the country, yes. and then when they're dealing with you, they deal with you completely differently when people Different. respect you. 
Yes. And, and they don't, they so don't see think... your color or anything. What, no. What no, 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 no. They're dealing Absolutely. with you with your intellectual property, your intellectual creativity, basically. 100%. You just yeah. said it. Yeah. That's it. No, beautifully done. Um, that's that's um, mm -hmm. a shout out from Morris Sinclair says hello from Atlanta. Hey, so, Morris, thank you so much. He promised that he will do it and he did. Uh, Sending you much love. Thank you so much. Thank He's you, an Morris. old friend, very supportive. Ah, uh, that's amazing. So, B, if people would like to hear more about what you do in the future, is this where they can get you? Um, if they go on Instagram or Facebook with these handles, yes. This is this this is my Instagram handle. Great. I have also be exotic by B Arthur on uh, Facebook. Okay. So yeah, that's how people can yes. Or just just Google B Arthur Ghana. Exactly. Everything and that's will exactly what I did please. this morning. I just Googled you and you're all over the place. You're everywhere. Really? <laughs> Yay! <laughs> That's good. No, B, it's been, it's been fun talking to you. It's been very educative as thank well. You. Uh, thank, thank you so, you so much, much for your time this evening, wherever people are in the world. Um, I think you've really opened our eyes to the role of creativity um, in everything that we do, including fashion design, poetry, art, and all spheres of life. I think you've added dancing even to, to creativity, which is part of it anyway. Oh, yeah, yes, yes, yes. I mean, I, I, I look forward to organizing uh, some poetry events with a group of young poets who have taken yes. under my wing. That's so, right. yeah, so I, I would like to do this, you know, I, we did one together recently. Right. It went well. So the idea is to have an interdisciplinary kind of event where we can merge uh, everything, music, yeah. dance, uh, fine arts, poetry, yeah. So yeah, we want to we want to do more of such a event. There is already an existing poetry scene. Wow. I'm I'm I don't consider that scene, but as I said, I'm a creative, and I'm you know I can deal with all creatives. All creatives. And I don't think that everybody should stay in their corner. On the contrary, I think we need to all collaborate and you know, sort of you know, as I said, in, in, in inter interpolinate. That's how it should be. Know? That's how it should be. Exactly, yes, yes. exactly. So, I think so you, I look you, forward. You started it as well. You've started it, so um, yeah. We, we, yeah, I started it. To... So I, I hope to do that. I hope to. Uh, I'm hoping to curate a show for, uh, for an artist when I hopefully get back to Accra next week. Um, I have several uh, online conferences still with the, uh, the whole you know global, fashioning assembly and the whole thing of. Uh, the whole idea of decolonizing fashion so that you know we don't feel we don't feel weird wearing our own clothes even when we travel like you need to own it you need to you know it. if you own it and you're confident you know then it doesn't really matter what the other people think about right. it you have to be comfortable yes and so yeah so i have a whole lot of interesting projects lined up for the year so life looks very exciting i hope Amazing. that 2023 would be Thank even God. you know even more exciting than 2022 was a blast it was absolutely yeah. awesome for me yes professionally and so i'm hoping that uh, 2023 will be on another level i also hope that the next time you invite me i would look less miserable because i have a cold <laughs> But you, you've done a proud. So, I think I, I think you've so, through the whole the whole um, so nasalized. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so so much. We're, we're looking My forward pleasure. to future projects that you bring our way, and by all means, definitely, I'll be inviting you back on this show. So thank you so much. I'll keep you posted, Eric. Thank you so much, thank and you. once more. Shout outs to all my friends and my fans and followers. Thank you very much for every to everybody who made time to tune in. And a big thank you to you, Eric. You're doing a great job. You, you know, I do something similar uh, like you do. I actually, it's not a live podcast. I film uh, also artists. I think more people, there should be more people like you and I exactly. telling our own story, exactly. you know, blowing our own horns, yeah. promoting our own culture out there, you right. know, and giving an opportunity for also, you know, both established and young artists to sure. tell their story. So yeah. on this note, thank you so thank much you. and uh, all you. the best. Goodbye. Thank you. Bye for now. So that was B. Arthur right there. Uh, I really thoroughly enjoyed this show. Um, she opened our eyes to so many things, 
in the creative industry, especially for the continent of Africa and the country of Ghana. So thank you, B. It was a pleasure speaking to you. And definitely I'm going to bring you back next time so that you tell us about your next project. So guys, hope you enjoyed it. And if you want me to bring more people from the continent of Africa, do well to follow me. And I'm going to put my YouTube channel, the details over there so that you can follow me. If you type in African Art with Eric, everything that I do with regards to this show um, will be at your fingertips. You get to join us every Saturday at 3 p.m. UK time as I bring you another artist from the continent of Africa. And not just a visual artist, I'm talking about creatives from all spheres of life. And if you want to follow me as well on social media, just type in ACAB Art 75 or type my name, Eric Amwakabwedu, and I will be there. So thank you so much for today and God bless you. Have a great week. Speak to you soon. <laughs>